Hello scramblers and climbers, good to be with you again. For the next few weeks we're going to be learning about somebody called Joshua. But just before I tell you all about him, what's the first thing we do every week? We say the scramblers prayer. So here we go. When I touch my head, I think of you, Father God. When I put my hand over my heart, I say that I love you. When I put my hands together, I ask you to come and make everything right. When I point to my mouth, I ask you to give us the food we need. When I bow my head, I say sorry for the wrong things I've done. When I lift my head, I know you forgive me. When I open my arms, I ask you to help me be friends with everyone. And then nice big amen. Amen. Do you remember that back in the summer we learned about Moses and how he led God's people out of Egypt and towards the land that God had promised them? We talked about how the people were in a desert for a long time. Do you remember they got hungry and they were very unhappy and God sent them manna and quail, which were little birds, to eat? And we learned about the ten rules that God gave them. And then how Moses went up the mountain to meet God. And later on how the people built the tabernacle, a special tent as a place where they could worship God. Anyway, God's people were in the desert for such a long time that Moses died and they needed a new leader. And that person was Joshua. We've got a video now to tell you all about it. God's story. Joshua becomes leader. So part of God's story is about when Joshua became leader of God's family, and it goes like this. Remember how God rescued his family when they were stuck as slaves in Egypt? He made a path right through the middle of the Red Sea. He showed them where to go with a pillar of fire at night and a cloud during the day. He gave them water from rocks and sent food like rain every morning. Best of all, he promised to bring them to an amazing new home called Canaan. All they had to do was trust him. But sometimes people have a hard time believing God will take care of them. So for a whole year, God's family worried and complained. They felt like they'd never get to the promised home where they would be safe and comfortable. And even though God was taking care of them every day, they kept worrying that he'd stop. But their leader Moses trusted God with his whole heart. And one day, God told Moses to send 12 men into Canaan as spies to see how great it was. So Moses did. And one of those 12 men was Moses' helper, Joshua. He trusted God too. Well, Joshua and the other spies spent 40 days in Canaan, and they discovered that the new home was as good as God had promised. There was delicious food, water flowed nearby, it was paradise. It had everything God's family needed and wanted. There was just one teeny tiny problem. People lived there already. Big people. Big people who lived in a big city called Jericho that was protected with really big, strong walls. And the people there did not plan to give up their home. So 10 of the spies came back terrified. They said, we look like grasshoppers compared to the people there. When the rest of God's family heard that, they got scared too. They didn't want to go to the promised land anymore. But Joshua knew that no problem is too big for God. He and another spy named Caleb argued, if the Lord wants to give it to us, he will. After all, God had shown his family how powerful he was. But even though God had always provided for his family, they still chose not to trust him. And because they made that choice, there was a consequence. God kept his whole family in the desert for 39 more years. So long that all the adults who chose not to trust that God could take them to the new land spent the rest of their lives in the wilderness. God kept taking care of them, of course, but life was nothing like it would have been in the promised home. The good news is, there was a blessing for Joshua and Caleb's obedience. They did live long enough to get to Canaan. See, God always keeps his promises. So eventually, he took his family into the promised land, and God chose a new leader to take them there, a guy who would trust him with his whole heart like Moses had. Yep, Joshua. And that's the story of when Joshua became the leader of God's family. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God took care of his family. He promised them a new home. They had to trust him. 12 spies visited Canaan. 
People already lived there. Joshua and Caleb trusted God. Most of God's family got scared. God's family stayed in the desert. God kept his promise. Joshua got ready to lead God's family into the promised land. And that's a part of God's story. Hello, scramblers and climbers. I wonder how Joshua felt taking over as leader from Moses. I expect he was proud to be the leader and excited that at last they were going into the land which God had promised them. It was going to be a lot nicer to live there than in the desert where they'd been for so long. But he was probably thinking too about the fierce people who lived there and their strong cities, how would they manage? Would he be a good leader like Moses had been? And would the people follow him? I think he was probably quite worried. God had done amazing things when Moses had been the leader, like making a path through the Red Sea so the people could cross. Would God still be with them and help them now Joshua was leader? So I think Joshua was quite scared and worried about whether he would manage and whether he would be a good leader. But God said to him something really important. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be frightened. Don't lose hope because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I think the hard thing for Joshua must have been to go ahead into something quite scary, trusting that God would be with him and keep him and the people safe when he couldn't actually see God. You know that some people can't see anything because they're blind. Some blind people have special dogs to show them the way to go. They trust their dogs to keep them safe. Let's watch a video about puppies learning to be guide dogs. Hi, I'm Casey. I'm a puppy, a Labrador retriever, and six weeks old. I love spending time with my brothers, sisters, and friends. Some are blonde like me, some are gold and fluffy, and some are brown and black and have pointy ears. We have so much fun playing together. We live at this wonderful place called the Seeing Eye. If I work and train hard, someday I can graduate and become a Seeing Eye dog. Do you know what that means? It means that I will be able to guide someone who has lost their sight. I can hardly wait. But. Before I can call myself a seeing eye dog, I have to learn a lot. While we are puppies, our caregivers wear funny clothes and hats. We learn to climb stairs, walk through dark tunnels, and listen to loud music and rainstorms. This exposes me to all sorts of new experiences. So when I become a seeing eye dog, I won't be scared. In a few weeks, I will be going to live with my puppy raising family. It's sort of like when you first started school. These nice people will teach me how to sit and other basic commands. They will take me to all sorts of new places, like movie theaters and airports. I'm so excited. I can't stop wagging my tail. When I return to the seeing eye, I will be much bigger and my training will get even harder. I will learn to wear a harness. This will allow me to guide my owner. I'll practice guiding them in busy streets up curbs and around low hanging tree branches and I will be tested too. I need to pass each and every test in order to graduate and become a seeing eye dog. It's hard and lots of work but I will make it. They will also teach me to sometimes reject my owner's command. It's called intelligent disobedience. For instance, if my owner wants to go forward but I see a train track in front of us I will turn my owner away 
from the track so they won't get hurt. I guess that's why they call us seeing eye dogs. But remember, if you see me or another seeing eye dog, don't try to pet us or feed us. We are working and we can't be distracted. Otherwise, our owners might get hurt. I'm so excited about my future. I really want to help people. I sure was lucky to be born at the seeing eye. Okay, I have to get back to work now. See you later. I really like those dogs. They learned to be brave and not to mind loud noises or being in the dark or going to strange places. We can learn to be brave too. When the dogs were fully trained, they helped their blind owners to find the way and to keep safe. I expect it's quite difficult to learn to trust your dog if you're blind, to step into a busy road or to walk near the edge of a railway platform. But you find out that your dog will never let you down. It's the same with God. If we trust him, we will find that he will never let us down. Over the next few weeks, we'll find out how Joshua trusted God and found that God was always with him, that he showed him what to do, helped him and kept the people safe. Well, in our story today, God told Joshua to be strong and to have courage. Do you know what courage is? It's being brave and doing the right thing even when it's difficult. And Joshua knew that leading the people into the land that God had promised them would be difficult and at times it would be frightening. It would have been very natural for him to feel afraid and to be worried he wouldn't be able to do it. But God told him that he needn't be afraid. He could have courage because God was going to be with him all the time. And the same is true for us as well. There are times when we're afraid or we think it's too difficult to do the right thing, but we need to remember that God is with us always and he will help us to be brave and courageous. Maybe when you're at school, somebody picks on one of the other children and says unkind things to them. And the easiest thing might be to join in and say nasty things too. But you know that's not how God would want you to behave. So you need courage not to join in but to say kind things to that person instead. So today we're going to make a shield with some words on it to remind us to have courage. And then when we need to be brave, we can remember what God told Joshua and remind ourselves that God is with us to always too and that we can be courageous and do the right thing. So we've got, we've sent you home a sheet like this and it says on it, be strong and of good courage. Now, because I think it's a bit boring for you to sit and watch me colour, I have already coloured in my letters and I have stuck it on the back of a piece of cardboard from a cereal packet to make it nice and strong. And then what we need to do is to cut all the way around the outside. If you stick it on here first, it's easier to cut it around neatly. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so here's my shield that I've cut out. And then if you also cut a strip of the, uh, of the end of your cereal packet, then we can stick this on the back and that will make a nice handle for our shield. There we are, that's stuck on the back. So can you see, I can hold onto my shield now. I'm gonna put that up somewhere to remind me to be brave and courageous and to ask God to help me to do the right thing all the time. Now, I've just colored in the letters. I've also, I've found some stars and I'm gonna stick those on because I think they might decorate it and make it just a bit more colorful. If you've got some stickers, maybe you could put some stickers on, but not to worry if you haven't. Okay, so here's my, uh, Here's my shield with its stickers on as well. You see them sparkling. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, and just to finish, we've got another song for you. It's a very jolly song, and I think you might find you want to dance along. 
It's all about not being afraid because God is with us. Okay, bye for now.